After dethroning the ring general Gunther this past Sunday night at SummerSlam, the American Nightmare Cody Rhodes set to defend his newly won United States Championship against the human highlight Rio Ricochet in tonight's main event. And on the road to the SmackDown exclusive No Mercy on September the 16th, we will decide Shayna Baszler's WWE Women's Championship number one contender in an eight woman over the top rope battle royal coming up later tonight on SmackDown. But we are live from the Pachanga Arena, San Diego, California, hot off the heels of the biggest party of the summer, SummerSlam, this past Sunday night. And we are set to kick things off in the 619 with the modern name Maharaja, Jinder Mahal, with his hands full against the phenomenal AJ Styles. Tons of history between these two men set to lock horns yet again as we kick off Friday Night SmackDown. And his opponent, representing the OC from Gainesville, Georgia, weighing in at 218 pounds, the phenomenal AJ Styles. Once again, ladies and gentlemen, we are coming your way next month, a part of a September doubleheader. On Saturday night, September, September the 16th, excuse me, we will have the No Mercy SmackDown exclusive event from Baltimore, Maryland, and just 24 hours later, Monday Night Raw heading to Chicago for the Unforgiven event. September doubleheader, tons of news coming your way regarding those two events. But tonight, the road to No Mercy kicks off on SmackDown. And of course, that big United States Championship main event, Cody Rhodes, Ricochet, one-on-one. -on -one. We're going to determine the number one contender for Shayna Baszler's Women's Championship that she retained this past Sunday against Asuka. But here we are in San Diego kicking things off with Jinder Mahal and the phenomenal AJ Styles. Last time we saw AJ Styles in action a number of weeks ago, last month in Greensboro, North Carolina, we went one-on-one -on -one with the Apex Predator Randy Orton. Of course, Randy Orton successful this past Sunday night at SummerSlam, defeating Edge in an awesome opening bout in Levi Stadium. And speaking on that match against Styles and Randy Orton last month in Greensboro, Randy Orton picked up the win on that night. But it was kind of a bounce back matchup from about a month and change prior to that, going back to the June area where AJ Styles defeated Randy Orton in the first round of the King of the Ring. This will be the quarterfinals of the King of the Ring as we check our notes here. But nonetheless, AJ Styles, Randy Orton, a lot of history between those two men. Rumors circulating that AJ Styles is itching for a rubber match. All remains to be seen if AJ is going to get his hands on the Viper in due time. But tonight, he's got to deal with Jinder Mahal. A lot of history between these two men. As we mentioned, Styles years ago defeated Jinder Mahal to become the WWE Champion. Can he defeat Jinder tonight on SmackDown? Big time suplex into the buckles. That is one way to keep the modern name Maharaja down. And for those who joined us this past Sunday night at SummerSlam, we want to extend our thank you for making it the most successful live premiere event to date. And of course, the replay available now for the biggest party of the summer. What an event it was this past Sunday in Levi Stadium. And going back to last Saturday afternoon, the Cruiserweight Classic, Manhattan, New York, Hammerstein Ballroom kicking off that tournament. Another successful live premiere event, and we will be live for week two of eight in the Cruiserweight Classic Tournament tomorrow afternoon at 3 p.m. Eastern Time. Do not miss out on the next chapter in the Cruiserweight Classic tomorrow But AJ Styles showcasing some of his Cruiserweight ability off the top rope. Spiral tap, but not enough to keep Jinder Mahal down. AJ Styles, all these years in the business, a veteran of the squared circle, still not afraid to take things to the air when he deems necessary. Ginger is really struggling to gain some momentum in this match, but of course, as we say, he gets the upper hand over the phenomenal AJ Styles. Nice reversal there. Now, Ginger Hall, a couple of months ago, lost in a matter of under a minute to the World Heavyweight Champion Drew McIntyre here on SmackDown. I'm sure that loss has been stinging with Mahal ever since. Tonight a chance for Jinder to get some momentum back on his side. Meanwhile, got AJ on the apron and drops him on the apron spine first. As we mentioned, Jinder Mahal looking to get some momentum back on his side and he could start here tonight with a victory over AJ Styles. 
AJ not going to allow it, though. The Phenomenal One's got other plans as he sends, or at least tries to send Jerry Mahal into the ring. Mahal down at ringside, and Styles' wheels are spinning. Here comes AJ off the apron with a forearm. You know, we are days removed from SummerSlam where Styles' boys, Carl Anderson and Luke Gallows, the OC, unfortunately coming up short. It was a tag team match of the year candidate to the Judgment Day. So I'm sure AJ Styles looking to bring some momentum to the OC locker room. Missed for the phenomenal forearm there, but still keeps the upper hand over Jinder Mahal. And a nice arm drag takedown. Styles sends Mahal back into the corner yet again. I don't know, I don't like Mahal's chances right now. AJ Styles really controlling the better part of this matchup. Breaking Steiner off the top. AJ is rolling. San Diego loving the action that they are witnessing right now. Styles had Mahal love, could have been going for that neck breaker. Jerry Mahal, however, gets out of it. Styles on the shoulders. Now it's AJ getting out of it. Nice reversal by the Phenomenal One. And now Styles grabbing a hold. Looking for a Styles clash, and he nails it. Into the cover, and that'll do it. AJ picking up a victory here to kick things off on the first Friday night SmackDown following SummerSlam. Jinder Mahal really struggled to gain momentum throughout this match, and AJ made him pay for it. Here is your winner. AJ made him pay for it in the end. A big win for the Phenomenal One. But as we mentioned, Styles, rumors swirling about that rematch with Orton. Are we going to see it in the near future here on SmackDown? Well, this past Saturday afternoon, the Cruiserweight Classic Tournament began. Akira Tozawa and Johnny Gargano opening up the first round of the tournament in a phenomenal contest between the whole shebang and a former Cruiserweight Champion in Tozawa. In the end, Johnny Gargano punching his ticket to the quarterfinals with this sneaky pinfall here over Tozawa. We found out who Gargano would meet in the quarterfinals in just a few weeks in the main event last Saturday when Dominic and Ray, the Mysterio family, collided in an amazing, emotional matchup between the father and son, where in the end, Dominic Mysterio stepping out of the spotlight, or stepping out of the shadows into the spotlight to defeat his father. But coming up tomorrow afternoon, 3 p.m. Eastern time, the tournament continues as one half of Los Lotharios, Angel Garza, set to battle, Mustafa Ali. And also coming up tomorrow in the first round, you are going to see NXT's Nathan Frazier taking on Wesley. Both of those first round matches, live premiere event tomorrow afternoon, 3 p.m. Eastern time as the 2023 Cruiserweight Classic Tournament continues. But speaking of the cruiserweight action, Chad Gable looking to keep his momentum going and possibly step one step closer to a matchup with Santos Escobar. The following contest is scheduled for one fall, making his way to the ring, accompanied by Otis, representing the Alpha Academy from Minneapolis, Minnesota, weighing in at 202 pounds, Chad Gable. Well, we want to take you back to two weeks ago here on SmackDown. Alpha Academy's Chad Gable one-on-one -on -one with Legado Del Fantasma's Joaquin Wilde. Very exciting matchup. Joaquin Wilde putting on a show here on the blue brand. But Chad Gable, the master himself, in the end, as you'll see here, a little chaos theory, sending Wilde for a ride and able to secure the 1-2-3 over one-third of Legado Del Fantasma. So now Alpha Academy's Master Gable set for action yet again. From what we understand, Santos Escobar about to be making his way out here with Legado Del Fantasma this week. He wants to get his closer eye on a man who could be coming for the Cruiserweight Championship in the near future, that being Chad Gable. Gable with the win over Joaquin Wilde two weeks ago, but will he be able to turn away the challenge of Cruz del Toro here tonight in San Diego, California? And his opponent, representing Legado del Fantasma from Cordoba, Veracruz, Mexico, weighing in at 
190 pounds, Cruz Toro. Well, and all this talk about the Cruiserweight Classic, we look at Cruz Del Toro. That is the tournament back in 2016 that introduced us to the talents of Del Toro. All these years later, a formidable opponent for Chad Gable and a formidable member of Legado Del Fantasma. The Joaquin Wild may have fell short to Master Gable two weeks ago. Cruz Del Toro, however, looking to have some different results tonight. And the Cruiserweight Champion of the World, Santos Escobar, the Emperor of Lucha Libre, coming to ringside this week. He wants to get a closer look at Master Gable in his pursuit of the Cruiserweight Championship of the World. Should be a great matchup tomorrow afternoon. We're going to see some amazing cruiserweight action in the Cruiserweight Classic Tournament at 3 p.m. Eastern Time. But here tonight in San Diego, it's Cruz Del Toro and Chad Gable. And Del Toro with the Insiguri. Not a lot of singles action for Cruz Del Toro in recent memory here on SmackDown, but certainly the tools to get the job done from bell to bell as Gable on the outside gets taken out by that step-up corkscrew. That is one of the maneuvers that put Cruz Del Toro on the map all those years ago. And it could be one of the maneuvers that's going to aid him in victory against Chad Gable tonight. Del Toro on the top of Gable. It would make Cruz lose his balance there as he hits the canvas. Master Gable met with the early offense of Del Toro. Now trying to get back into this fight in an uphill battle. Gable looking to keep that momentum going tonight. Picked up that victory over Joaquin Wilde two weeks ago. And with a lot of the Cruiserweight division taken up right now in that Cruiserweight Classic Tournament, the field is wide open for Gable to step up and challenge Santos Escobar in the near future for the Cruiserweight Championship of the World. That's only going to come if he can get the W. And Cruz Del Toro, I'm sure, has a strict order tonight to ensure that Chad Gable falls short in his pursuit of victory. A beautiful snap German into the bridge by Del Toro. And he gets the two. But only that. Chad Gable knows that German suplex very well. Delivers it extremely well on his own. Able to get the shoulder up there. And now once again trying to get back into this matchup. A lot of early high offense from Cruz Del Toro. But Gable has had to outlast thus far. Chad Gable... Look to slow the pace down, which might be Master Gable's best case scenario here. Bruce Del Toro already showcasing he's willing to fly all around the ring for the rights of victory for the Legado del Fantasma locker room. But Chad Gable with something else in mind tonight. Gable, such a technician inside of that ring. And he can take things to the air in his own right, but Cruz Del Toro telling Chad Gable that there's only going to be one man coming out with their hand raised high tonight. And that's going to be the member of Legato Del Fantasma, who heads to the top corkscrew arm drag that he was looking for a few moments ago. This time Lance Foss over Master Gable. Del Toro looking awesome in this matchup. Pulling out some amazing maneuvers that Chad Gable may not have been expecting thus far. However, Gable's able to survive. Tell you what, win, lose, or draw, Cruz Del Toro putting on a show tonight as Chad Gable rolls to the outside here, trying to get some distance between himself and one-third of Legato Del Fantasma. And Gable looking to play a game of cat and mouse, at least for the moment. Del Toro back inside of the ring, and Chad Gable gets his wish. Now it's Del Toro fighting the uphill battle as Gable goes behind and breaking the tailbone of the opponent. Gable once again, double underhook, power bomb, stacks him up with it into the cover. Will that do it? Not just yet. Once again, the Cruiserweight Classic Tournament continues tomorrow afternoon. Oh, wait a minute, Chad Gable heading to the top. Could be looking for that picture-perfect moonsault into the cover. Will that do it? And he almost had him there. Del Toro gets the shoulder up. A close call for Alpha Academy's Master Gable. Take nothing away from the talents of Chad Gable. This rise that we are seeing recently has been a long time coming. You remember just a few months ago here on SmackDown, Gable went one-on-one -on -one with the World Heavyweight Champion Drew McIntyre and absolutely pushed him to his limits. 
Gable has all the tools to be a champion. He's held tag team gold in the past, but never a singles title. Cruz del Toro, however, not interested in Gable's pursuit of championship glory. Almost stole the victory there. Off the distraction, another snack German. Elects not to go for the pinfall this time. Knows he's got to do more damage on Alpha Academy's Gable. This reversal there by Gable, however. Shot to the solar plexus to take out Cruz Del Toro, at least for a moment. And Del Toro, in an opportune state, could be about to feel the same punishment Joaquin Wilde felt two weeks ago. Chaos Theory into the bridge, into the cover, and into the victory. Chad Gable goes two for two. First Joaquin Wilde, now Cruz Del Toro. I think there's only one left for Master Gable. Here is your winner, Chad Gable. Chad Gable making a very interesting resume, and he could be next in line to challenge Santos Escobar for the Cruiserweight Championship of the World. But coming up tomorrow afternoon, we are live at 3 p.m. Eastern time for the first round of the Cruiserweight Classic Tournament as Mustafa Ali will take on Los Lotharios, Angel Garza, and then following that, NXT's Nathan Frazier, former Heritage Cup champion, challenges former NXT Tag Team champion, Wesley, who will join Johnny Gargano and Dominic Mysterio in the quarterfinals. We find out tomorrow afternoon live at 3 p.m. from Manhattan, New York. On the road to no mercy, it is time to determine the number one contender for the WWE Women's Championship. The following contest is an eight-woman battle royal. Making her way to the ring from San Jose, California, Bailey. Who will challenge Shayna Baszler on the 16th of September in Baltimore? We find out live next here in San Diego on Friday Night Smackdown. The next time we come your way for not one, but two live premiere events is 27 nights from tonight as we kick off a huge September doubleheader weekend. First, on Saturday, September 16th, we bring to you a Friday Night Smackdown exclusive event, No Mercy, live from the CFG Bank Arena in Baltimore, Maryland. And then just 24 hours later, the Monday Night Raw crew headlines the exclusive Unforgiven event, taking place on September 17th from the All-State Arena in Chicago, Illinois. It's a September doubleheader, a live premiere weekend featuring the Cruiserweight Classic, SmackDown's No Mercy in Baltimore, and Raw's Unforgiven in Chicago. The field of eight continues to flow. Here comes the ballsy badass, Shotzi. And Shotzi has certainly turned over a new leaf in recent history here on Friday Night SmackDown. Ever since she turned her back on her former tag team partner, the EST of WWE, Bianca Belair, Shotzi has been on a roll here on the blue brand. Recent victories over Aliyah and Candice LeRae, Shotzi definitely at the top of the list of viable challengers to challenge Shayna Baszler next for the WWE Women's Championship. And this is a woman who last year was really in the hunt for the WWE Women's title. And was able to accomplish that dream and hold the title in her hands last November at Survivor Series. Obviously that championship reign coming to an end on January the 1st at the Royal Rumble. But then Shotzi went on to WrestleMania this year to win Tag Team Championship Gold alongside, again, her former Tag Team partner Bianca Belair. But Shotzi has had enough of the teaming up with Bianca. She wants to get herself back in the limelight. She has had enough of playing nice. Shotzi wants her chance to hold the championship once again and become a three-time WWE Women's Champion. She's got that opportunity tonight. Will the ballsy badass be able to capitalize? And from Glen Ridge, 
Orange, New Jersey, one half of the Women's Tag Team Champions, Katana Chance. Well, the other half of the Women's Tag Team Champions, Kaden Carter, already at ringside. But I will look at Katana Chance for a second. This is a woman who made her main roster debut around this time last year after SummerSlam and really turned a lot of heads. An amazing in-ring style does Katana Chance bring to the table. And she has pushed some of the best of them in the division to their limits. We're talking Asuka, we're talking Bianca Belair. Katana Chance could easily be an underdog in this matchup. Already holding championship gold around her waist. It was only a few weeks ago here on SmackDown that Katana went one-on-one -on -one with the champion herself, Shayna Baszler. May have come up short in her pursuit, but definitely pushed Baszler to the limits on those nights. Could the one half of the women's tag team champions in Katana Chance be able to outlast seven others in this battle royal? Well, business certainly picking up here in San Diego for the first time since Shotzi decked this woman in the middle of the ring. Bianca Belair is back here on SmackDown and the final participant of eight in this number one contenders battle royal. Well, this could be a two for one special for the EST, a chance at retribution against the ballsy badass Shotzi and a chance to become the number one contender for the WWE Women's Championship. Bianca Belair back in action here tonight. I'm sure she's got her mind right, and I'm sure she's got her mind set on retribution and taking full advantage of the opportunity at hand this evening. But so does the other seven women. Who will move on to Baltimore, Maryland on the 16th of September? We find out right now as the bell has sounded and this battle royal is underway. Let's look at the field. Bailey, Bianca Belair, Io Sky, Candice LeRae, Kaden Carter, Dakota Kai, Katana Chance, and Shotzi. Eight of the top women here on SmackDown, but Shayna Baszler has been standing firm over the entire WWE Women's Division for several months here at WWE. 13 match winning streak for Shayna Baszler for retaining that title this past Sunday in Levi Stadium in what was being called the money fight and certainly ended up living up to the hype in a matchup against the Empress of Tomorrow, Asuka. Baszler has held that title since June 16th at King of the Ring, and she has turned away the best of them on Raw, on SmackDown. But will one of these women inside the squared circle tonight be the recipe for success to take down the Queen of Spades at no mercy? Oh, it remains to be seen, but wait a minute, Shotzi just got sent out of here! Dakota Kai, what an upset! And I can't believe it, possibly the favorite to win this matchup, the one coming in with the most momentum. Shotzi the first eliminated as Dakota Kai sends her over the top and knocks her out of the ring. And now Dakota looking to keep things going, taking down Candice LeRae. Could Dakota Kai be a dark horse and win in this matchup tonight? That is a huge shocker, certainly opens up this playing field. Who is going to take advantage of the opportunity at hand tonight? Let's look at some of the other talent in here. Of course, you got the women's tag team champions, Katana Chance, Kaden Carter. As we discussed a few minutes ago, Katana Chance, she went one-on-one -on -one with Baszler a number of weeks back on SmackDown, pushed the Queen of Spades to her limits, but ultimately came up short. Maybe another contest against Shayna Baszler would be what Katana Chance needs to get the victory, but nonetheless, Dakota Kai, a big upset a few minutes ago, eliminating Shotzi, but Dakota is heading... Heading to the back, not going to get her opportunity here tonight. And just like that, in a matter of seconds, it feels like, we are down to six women. This battle royal is so dangerous, you can be eliminated at any time. you got to watch your back at all times. Eyes in the back of your head. Over the top rope, both feet hitting the floor. You are eliminated. I'm sure Shayna Baszler is observing the field somewhere in the arena tonight, scouting who her next challenger is going to be. Talked about being in there with Katana Chance, but what about being in there with Candice LeRae? 
Remember back in June, Candice LeRae making her SmackDown return for the first time since WrestleMania, and she took on Shayna Baszler after Baszler issued that open challenge for the Women's Championship. And remember what happened on that night? Caden Carter has been eliminated. As Caden Carter heading to the back by hands of Candice LeRae. And remember what happened back in June, Shayna Baszler, she defeated Candice LeRae by via countout to retain the championship. She was struggling to defeat Candice in that matchup. Could Candice LeRae be the one, not only to get that opportunity, but possibly take down the Queen of Spades? I'm sure Candice has been thinking about that ever since June, tonight the night, for that opportunity. What about Io Sky? She's been trying to build some momentum for herself here on SmackDown. She's got a lot of history of Shayna Baszler as well. Oh, remains to be seen. We are down to five women at the current moment. Io Sky, Katana Chance, Candice LeRae, Bianca Belair, and Bailey. I wonder what's going through Bianca's mind. Came into this matchup thinking she was going to get an opportunity at retribution over Shotzi, but Shotzi hit the showers early. And I think that's kind of a good thing in the sense for Bianca Belair taking Shotzi out of the equation. Bianca can focus on the women's championship opportunity. All remains to be seen who is going to be the last woman standing here tonight in the Pachanga Arena, sold out for weeks in San Diego, California. It yeah. won't be Eo Sky. Has been eliminated. The EST Bianca Belair sending Eo Sky back to the locker room, and eight becomes four. Who is going to be the woman to challenge Shayna Baszler on the 16th of September? CFG Bank Arena in Baltimore, Maryland, the SmackDown exclusive No Mercy event. One half of the women's tag team champions, Katana Chance, Candice LeRae, Bailey, and the EST, Bianca Belair. All four viable challengers that could definitely give Shayna Baszler a run for her money. It's only going to be one woman, and right now, Katana Chance and Bailey, the only two women standing inside the squared circle. And maybe not for long, Bailey trying to send Candice LeRae back to the locker room here and make this four become three. Will she do it? And that she does. Katana Chance has been eliminated. Katana Chance and Kaden Carter, the women's tag team champions, not going to find their way in victory tonight. But we leave this with three. Candice LeRae, Bailey, Bianca Belair. Only one woman can challenge Shayna Baszler for the championship. Bailey down the corner. Bianca showcasing her strength. Big time powerbomb on Candice wrestling herself. Now Bailey looking to take out the knee of the EST. It almost becomes more dangerous. And he gets to the later rounds in this contest. Fatigue starts to set in at a big time elimination as Bianca Belair catching Bailey off guard had her eyes focused on Candace and got set over the top rope by the EST. And we are down to two. Candace LeRae, Bianca Belair, who is heading to no mercy in Baltimore. Now Candice and Bianca, a lot of history between these two women. We we're talking about WrestleMania as Shotzi was walking towards the aisle tonight. But it was Bianca Belair and Shotzi who defeated Candice and Indy Hartwell back in February at WrestleMania for the Women's Tag Team Championships. I'm sure Candice LeRae has not forgotten. Bianca on the top rope, Candice LeRae looking to weaken the opponent here. Bianca's had weeks to rest, making her return tonight. Candice trying to take it the rug out from the EST. Big time neck breaker from the middle buckle, but she's got to get her up and over the top rope. And Bianca over, Candice trying to go for the elimination, but the EST holds on. The strength of Bianca, well documented, utilized it there to save herself in this match. But Candice LeRae so agile, it would take Bianca Belair down to the canvas again. And Bianca hung up against the ropes. And Candice LeRae realizes that Bianca Belair has still got some fuel left in the tank. She's going to have to weaken this opponent to send her over the top. Bianca caught Bailey off guard. Candice does not want to find herself in that same predicament. It was a brain buster there on the EST. And is starting to unload here. Again, really trying to weaken the opponent before she 
once again attempts to send her over the top and get the final elimination of this battle royal. Candace Springboard could have been going for that Poison Rana, did the Poison Pixie, but Bianca Belair sidesteps it. And that may have been a mistake out of the veteran Candice LeRae as Bianca Belair now starting to pick the bones of the opponent. Now once again the strength of Bianca muscling Candice LeRae in the air for the fireman's carry. Press slam. What a fall for Candice Wrestling. And now Bianca and once again tries to send Candice up but Candice reversed. Over the top goes Bianca, and she got her! Candice LeRae with the elimination, off the reversal, and Candice LeRae is going to no mercy! Well, Candice has been thinking about running it back with Shayna Baszler since that countout loss in June. Now she gets her opportunity next month in Baltimore. Here is your winner, Candice a big time victory here tonight in San Diego in the eight women battle royal. And Mrs. Wrestling herself, Candice LeRae, will stand across the squared circle from the Queen of Spades, Shayna Baszler, for the WWE Women's Championship September the 16th in Baltimore at no mercy. All this talk of the No Mercy event, well next week on SmackDown, we're going to determine the number one contender for the World Heavyweight Championship. A rematch a month in the making as the phenomenal AJ Styles meets the Apex Predator Randy Orton and a shot at Drew McIntyre is on the line. The following contest is scheduled for one fall and is for the WWE United States. But as for tonight here in San Diego, it is main event time for the United States Championship. This man took down the Nigerian giant Omar seven nights ago, and the one and only Ricochet marches into San Diego tonight with the United States Championship aspirations. You know, the one and only is gonna be a member of the Cruiserweight Classic Tournament, his first round bout coming up in a matter of weeks, but tonight, he focuses on the United States Championship no longer held by the ring general Guther, but now around the waist of the American Nightmare Cody Rhodes. Ricochet has been climbing the mountain here on SmackDown. This time last year is in the midst of a six month reign with the Cruiserweight Championship. Earlier this year, we have seen Ricochet as one half of the Dusty Rhodes Tag Team Classic winners at WrestleMania alongside Mustafa Ali held the World Tag Team titles with Ali as well. And last month we saw the, the Human Highlight Reel as one of the SmackDown participants in the Money in the Bank ladder matchup. But tonight Ricochet certainly meets the biggest opportunity in some time as he looks to take down the brand new champion of Friday Nights and the American Nightmare. However, Cody Rhodes went down a long, hard road to try to finally take down the ring general Guther. And this past Sunday night at SummerSlam, undesirable became undeniable, and Cody Rhodes became United States Champion. And I'm sure the American Nightmare, with all the respect in the world for Ricochet, is not looking to let up his grasp on the gold anytime soon. Cody Rhodes looks locked and loaded tonight after a war just a few days ago in Levi Stadium. And what a match it was, quite possibly one of the matches of the year against Guther. And Cody Rhodes survived it all. Last Symphony, chokehold submission, power bomb that he got stacked up right into the pinfall and Cody Rhodes kicked out at one. And it may have took everything in the tank for the American Nightmare to survive a formerly undefeated opponent in the ring general Guther. But everything Cody threw at Guther this past Sunday night followed up with not one, 
but two crossroads was the recipe for success and Cody Rhodes leaving San Francisco with the red, white, blue and gold that is now wrapped around his waist. Cody Rhodes, if there's one thing we know about this man is that he is going to be a fighting champion. Just days after taking down Guther, he is back between the ropes, set to defend that beautiful United States gold. Big time man event here in San Diego. Let's send things down to the ring for your official match introductions. Introducing the challenger from Paducah, Kentucky. Weighing in at 190 pounds, Ricochet! And his opponent from Atlanta, Georgia, weighing in at 220 pounds. He is the WWE United States Champion, the American Nightmare, Cody Rhodes! Cody Rhodes taking a gaze at the gold that he won this past Sunday, but is he about to hand it over for the first and final time in this United States Championship reign. The first defense in said reign, but there's the one and only Ricochet who is appropriately dressed in the red, red, white, and blue tonight. But will he be leaving with gold wrapped around his waist? That is the question we are about to find an answer to. There's your main event here on Friday Night Smackdown, the human highlight reel, Ricochet, the American Nightmare, Cody Rhodes. The bell has sounded and we are underway and Cody Rhodes has his foot on the gas pedal since the opening bell. Immediately coming out hot, disaster kick on Ricochet, but the one and only is going to give Cody the fight of his life, that's for damn sure. Early cover by Ricochet and only a one. Tons of respect between these two phenomenal competitors, but when the gold's on the line, you know they are going to hold nothing back as Cody gets sent over the top rope, and Ricochet can already be thinking about going where he's most comfortable, that of course is high in the sky. Corkscrew to the outside. There is a reason they call Ricochet the human highlight reel, a one and only superstar. It is because of maneuvers like that and so many more. That is what has brought Ricochet so much success in just the last 12 months alone. But will tonight be the night that Ricochet adds a new championship to his list of accolades, a title he has held before, looking for a brand new reign in the United States Championship. Cody took his eye off the ball. Ricochet looking to steal the victory and only a one count. I think Ricochet trying to get in the mind of Cody with these early pinfalls. No, he's not going to keep down the American Nightmare. It's certainly trying to get into the wherewithal of Cody here. And you got to wonder what the condition is of Cody Rhodes coming into this match tonight. As we mentioned, a man who will certainly be a fighting champion. Well, there's no way Cody is walking into San Diego tonight, just days removed from a war in San Francisco with the ring general Gunther. All remains to be seen how that matchup back at SummerSlam is going to affect Cody tonight. And as for Ricochet, as we mentioned just seven nights ago, here on SmackDown in Sacramento, Ricochet went one-on-one -on -one with the Nigerian giant Omos. He may have outlasted the bigger, stronger competitor, but at what cost? All remains to be seen. At the end of the day, these two men gonna keep fighting until they hear a bell and until somebody leaves San Diego with the United States Championship. Face first off the canvas goes Ricochet and another one count there seems to be the theme of the matchup thus far. Cody heading to the top, looks for the elbow but nobody home. Ricochet telling Cody not to bring a knife to a gunfight. Don't try to outsmart me in my strong suit of high risk maneuvers. Now Ricochet hanging up Cody on the top. Now again, going where he's most comfortable, but not enough as Cody meets him there. Or I should say meets him to the finish line, beats him to the finish line, knocks Ricochet off the top and delivers a classic Cody knee. Cody's best situation in this matchup, maybe to ground the one and only. We've already seen Ricochet try to take things to the air on numerous occasions. Cody has as well, but Cody's best strategy may be to ground the challenger, slow down the pace, and just try to out-wrestle Ricochet here tonight. 
All remains to be seen what the American Nightmare is going to bring to the table. Cody has been on a roll over the last several weeks here on SmackDown. Remember how Cody became the number one contender and earned that matchup with Guther at SummerSlam. It was in a fatal five-way matchup, elimination style, where he eliminated every single person in that match, which featured Robert Roode, Dolph Ziggler, Mustafa Ali, and Braun Breaker. Cody beat them all on one night, and then went on to beat Guther this past Sunday. Nice reversal by Ricochet there off the kick. Sends Cody into the ropes. Pops Cody up. Great strength by the one and only. German into the bridge, and only a one count again. Ricochet has not gotten the same amount of offense as Cody has dished to him, but now Stortner take a toll, if you will. Cody to the outside, and Ricochet goes to the air. There is no running from a man who will jump from pillar to post to deliver the punishment. And now sending the champion back inside the ring, where he can try to gain the one, two, and the three. And a cross body from the top. Great maneuver by Ricochet. And elects for the pinfall here. But again, only a one count. Ricochet's going for a lot of pinfalls in this match, trying to catch Cody off guard. Get into the mindset of the American Nightmare, as we talked about earlier. But Ricochet has got to deal some more punishment to keep down a man with a dream tonight. Classic moonsault out of the arsenal. And again, the pinfall. And only a two. At least got the two that time. One step closer to the three count. Off the ropes of the Pele. Ricochet giving us a greatest hits of the one and only in this matchup. In an attempt to dethrone the American Nightmare. Cody off the reversal. Again, takes Ricochet off his feet, trying to ground the challenger. Goes for the cover himself. And no way he was going to keep down Ricochet for three off that simple reversal. Hell of a matchup thus far in your main event in San Diego. Meanwhile, Cody Rhodes, Vertebreaker, and that may do it. Cody has won matches in the past with that maneuver, but it won't do it for him tonight as Ricochet gets the shoulder up and Cody's in disbelief. Ricochet now is the one on the run, and Cody is the one taking things in the air. A little bit off balance, but nonetheless, the delivery was there off the dive to the outside. And now Cody Rhodes starting to rally San Diego. Pachunga Arena that's been sold out for weeks in favor of the American Nightmare, at least for the current moment. Ricochet's got to get to his feet. Cody on his tail at ringside. Now making Ricochet eat the floor of the arena for dinner. And Cody may be trying to break things down into a brawl. That is at least what we are seeing right now as the fight continues. On the outskirts of the squared circle, Cody could have been going for a DDT on the outside here. Ricochet trying to avoid disaster. Cody not going to allow Ricochet to take back the momentum. Cody Rhodes realizes he's got to change up the arsenal. Ricochet bringing something different to the table tonight that Cody has not dealt with in recent memory. Now Ricochet to the outside with the cross body off the top rope. So impressive by the one and only to dive over the ring post. Make sure he doesn't land on the steel steps, but only on the heart and soul of the American Nightmare. And back inside the squared circle we go. Ricochet misses for the forearm, but does not miss off that chest to the chest. And now into the corner and delivers the drop kick. Shooting star into the cover. We're gonna have a new chip beam and only a one. Ricochet and Cody Rhodes tearing down the house here in San Diego, California tonight. Who is going to leave the United States champion on Friday Night SmackDown? Cody down, but is Cody out as Ricochet scales the ropes? He'll be going for a Alexa Phoenix splash, and he delivers it to the lower back. And Cody, who's not coming into this match 100%, has got to be feeling it, but he still has enough heart to get the shoulder off the canvas. What a maneuver by Ricochet, but unfortunately not enough to win the gold. Cody in the corner, and Ricochet just trying to keep his foot on the gas, but the American Nightmare 
trying to avoid disaster. However, Ricochet's still swinging for the fences. A reversal by Cody. Cody goes behind. Crossroads! Dead center of the canvas and into the cover. And the United States Championship remains with the American Nightmare. Nothing to be ashamed of in defeat. Ricochet brought it to the dance tonight, but in the end, Cody Rhodes was simply the better man and simply the one true United States Champion here on Friday Night SmackDown. Here is your winner, and still, WWE United States Champion. Oh, wait a minute. Wait a minute, Braun Breaker. Braun Breaker from behind ambushing Cody Rhodes. Well, the man who defeated Dolph Ziggler inside the steel cage last week in Sacramento is here tonight in San Diego and just blasted Cody with his own damn piece of hardware. Braun Breaker just threw down the gauntlet and I think Cody has his next challenger in line. Meaner than evil, Braun Breaker. Things are picking up here on SmackDown. Pace on when I chase like that, yeah, I play so strong with a knife in the back. I'm a swing home run like a baseball bat. Gonna see me rise if you hate on that. I don't play both sides, doing me no cap. I'm around.